For Labor Day weekend, we took our camper to Susquehanna State Park in Havre de Grace, which is at the northern end of the Chesapeake. It's been kind of raining on and off a little bit today. Back and forth clouds and then a little blue sky comes out, but you know, that's how it goes <laughs> when you're on the East Coast. It's just normal. It rains so, so frequently. But I just wanted to show you as we're getting ready to head out, here's the space that we created when we took that wall out. And we were saying it's almost like there's a chase lounge now. We can move the wedge pillows over there and then we have all this space where it connects to the dinette and the whole <laughs> the irony of the situation is that we were doing this because we knew red was coming with us and we wanted to have that extra bed space when we pull out the bed extension it's like this whole thing it's almost like a queen size bed I would think which is great when red is sleeping there and we were so excited to test it out, which is why I think I was, I mean, that and many other things, I was so, so disappointed that we couldn't find his paperwork. I can't, I still can't believe that. Like, keep looking at Pat, like, where, where could it have gone? We're so organized. But yeah, still very happy with this. Maybe in the next couple weekends, we'll try to do a quick little trip. But the other thing I'm sad about is this is my last three-day weekend. I think for the year, I don't think there's any more three-day weekend holidays. So this was kind of it. But we are hoping that the weather is going to hold and we're going to head back into Havre de Grace because it's just such a, a neat little town. Oh, and we're on a mission. <laughs> what, are, what are we going to find? Maybe some donuts. Donuts. Yeah. There's like two, two bakeries that we could hit up. Okay. That was the one we didn't hit up. Though. Yeah. Because those cookies yesterday, they set the bar high. Yeah. I don't even know if you'd call them cookies. They were, they were artisan. They were an experience. Um, all right, so donuts. So don't let the weight of the world slow you down. And if you search for the meaning of life, it won't be found. So take your insecurities and leave them all behind. Let's learn to make the most of our time. came down from Susquehanna State Park and made our way into Havre de Grace. It's a very long hill that comes down from the bluffs of the river and you go under a few bridges before you make your way into the downtown area. And downtown Havre de Grace is a great spot. It is very condensed and very walkable. There are lots of locally owned small businesses and even though it was cloudy and there was a threat of rain today, we were still prepared to make the most of this very walkable area. First, we were on a mission to find a bakery and to get a couple things to try there. We were still sad that Redford wasn't with us because this is such a dog-friendly town. They go as far as to have a dog water fountain and a lot of the businesses have stickers on the window to indicate that they are dog friendly. We found the bakery and we were able to get some things to try before they closed. Which one do you want? I think coconut. I think coconut. That's going to be a mess. <laughs> I don't know what this one is. We made it just in time. They closed at two. And uh, we made it just a couple minutes before. Not super sweet. No. I like coconut more than I thought I would. Mm. We're on a roll. Mm. We had uh, ice cream for lunch yesterday. We're eating donuts for lunch today. We're gonna go hike it off though. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't rain. All right, don't eat that whole one. Jeez. Mm. Yesterday we explored the southern part of Havre de Grace and the Lafayette Trail. So today we were heading toward the northern part of town. Again, following the Lafayette Trail, which is a walking trail that hits a lot of the main historic features 
of downtown. We went under the old railroad bridge and headed toward the Lock Museum and the park at the northern part of town where there's a nice walking trail. It says open. <laughs> We're like, is it open? Giant flag. Mm -hmm. Between the Lockhouse Museum and the river, you can still see the canal and they have a bridge where you can walk over it and see some descriptions of how the locks actually worked and how important they were to this area. It was critical to use the locks and the waterway as transportation for all sorts of goods and products during that time before the railroad was able to be used to move things. This is a key piece of the history in this region. So we decided to go into the Lock Museum and learn more about what life was like in this area and specifically what life was like for the lock keeper. The same width, yeah. unless they're a special cutout, like around the hearth. Mm -hmm. All of the boards up there can be similar, but you'll see different sizes. Crossing out. Yeah, it definitely has that feel. Yeah, <laughs> what is it? Just wood with plaster. Yeah. Hmm. But he said this whole thing's been redone. Yeah. Except for that that one <laughs> metal hook in the uh, in the fireplace. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what he was talking about. The crossing. Oh, okay. So they had an aqueduct. Mm -hmm. Very neat. When you enter the Lockhouse Museum, there are volunteers that are very knowledgeable about everything that happened in this area. You can listen to them explain some of the artifacts, and then you can go upstairs and explore the property a little bit on your own. Yeah, the, the old-fashioned sewing machine, that's really cool. Like my so, parents have that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so he was saying that this is like a, a very high class bed, very fancy. Neat. The lock keeper's house is definitely worth a stop, especially if you're here on a rainy day and you're looking for something inside. We went into the lock keeper's house and that was neat. We got like a little tour there and the guy was super, super informative. Lots of neat historic stuff. Now we're gonna go check out the hiking trail, but of course it's starting to rain. Apparently, as we walk the trail, we have to watch out for snapping turtles. Fresh shoes. <laughs> Just past the Lockhouse Museum is the North End Park with a 1.3 mile loop that goes through some areas right along the river and you get to go underneath a few more of the bridges. So it's definitely a nice hike. This is a very neat trail. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I saw on the brochure it said there's a bunch of little bridges. mostly flat so it would be accessible to a variety of different levels. It also follows part of the old railroad bed so you have to watch your footing in a couple spots but it's a, a pretty accessible trail. Watch your step. Yeah. It's neat to see the underside of the bridge like that too. Yeah. You just want to walk up a little bit? Yeah. A train? Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's funny. As we came back around the loop, we started to walk back toward town and we decided that we were getting hungry for some real food. So we stopped and Patrick had a crab cake sandwich and I got the crab bisque soup, which was amazing. I feel like that's one of those things you have to have when you're in Maryland. It was so good. And we had this nice waterfront view 
But after that, we headed back toward the camper because we were going to get ready. We had to head home the next day and we just wanted to relax at camp for a while because this campsite that we had at Susquehanna State Park was enveloped in the trees, so it was very private. The campground wasn't super quiet because it was a holiday weekend and people tend to be a little bit more rambunctious on those weekends, but we still enjoyed this campsite quite a bit. wanted to show you the updated bed setup, which we're pretty happy with. We are still going to change out the mattress, so we're not going to be using the original scamp cushions because they are, they're just super firm and we need these to be a little bit longer because our feet just kind of barely hit the edge right now. So when I redo the mattress, I'll be able to cut slightly longer pieces, so um, it'll be the perfect length. But what we did was cut out this wall and it came out better than we expected. That wall used to come out much farther to form the back of the dinette to like right here. So we kept that piece of fiberglass and I put some industrial Velcro on the sides there because I was thinking that I would probably put that piece back in during the day so that if I sit, this is my side of the dinette, if I sit there I have a backrest, but I actually really like how it looks without that piece of fiberglass there. It just feels more open in here and most of the time if I do sit at the dinette here I just kind of sit upright. I don't lean back that much so it's really not a big deal leaving it out but I'm just gonna stick it under the bed for now so if I ever do want to put it back in I can. Um, now the only thing left is for us to actually go on a trip with Redford to see how how well this works having the extra space with the dog because that's really what this was all about but um yeah overall really happy that we <laughs> did the scary thing and cut this wall out I think it's made this camp just work a lot better and make our our sleeping arrangements work better it's a very well designed dump station it's kind of weird but we actually were like connoisseurs of dump stations now, but there's a, a neat exhibit over here of invasive species and native species examples. And here's the spotted lanternfly and uh, saying that they have no natural predators here, which is why they're doing so much damage to the um, not only native plants, but a lot of our food crops like grapes and things like that. So pretty neat. All right. We're gonna head out of here, and most important mission of the day is to go get Redford. This weekend was our official two-year anniversary of having the RV, or using the RV. We got it the week before Labor Day, and two years ago Labor Day at Bass River was our first trip ever. We, just, we really didn't use any of the systems, which is funny, and then, you know, now it's just sort of second nature to us, setting up, breaking down, dumping the tanks, doing all that kind of stuff. So a lot has been learned in those two years. But overall, this weekend was, I think, nicer than we even expected. Havre de Grace was kind of the, the ideal thing that we look for when we're going somewhere. It has that combination of interesting history, a cute town with culture and a variety of food and different places that you can eat at and get coffee and access to a bunch of outdoor stuff hiking and um, if you had bikes around here this would be a great place to bike but the city is very walkable we were able to park and then just walk around and see all sorts of stuff so it really was a just like the ideal combination of things that we look for and we were both kind of thinking like, why don't you hear more about this place? I actually was saying I like Havre de Grace more than Harper's Ferry. Although I do still want to go back to Harper's Ferry because I feel like there were a lot of things that we didn't get to do. We didn't get to do the main hike I wanted to do. But overall, I felt like Havre de Grace was very, very tourist friendly, very dog friendly, which is so frustrating. But hopefully we'll get to come back at some point with Redford because the businesses, a lot of them are dog friendly. Um, they put water dishes outside. I mean, it's just 
very, <laughs> very friendly to travelers and very welcoming. The people and the business owners were incredibly friendly. We were kind of like amazed by that, but um, it just added to the whole experience of the weekend. So Maryland in general, we're always surprised by Maryland. I don't know why, but we're kind of like, don't think that it's gonna be a, a big thing because it's so close to us. It's like a, a little less than a two hour drive for us to get most places, but very impressed by Maryland. So we'll have to plan more Maryland trips this fall. Well, you worried about you and me, the injustice, the next president to be. The news and watch hear your career. It's time for you to face those fears. And it's all fair to be aware and I'll be there. So don't be scared. Just take a deep breath of air. And one, two, three to ten. You begin to focus again. And though time flies, we have enough to realize this bigger than the both of us.